The Tavistock Pediatric Gender Clinic is closed down for being unsafe for children. An army veteran is arrested for posting a meme on Facebook and Twitter activists have a tantrum because, well, it's J.K. Rowling's birthday. This is Free Speech Nation. We hear a lot from activists about how they are on the right side of history. Such a thing doesn't exist, of course. It's a romantic idea based on the utopian notion that progress is an inevitability and that as the years pass, humanity will naturally be moving towards a condition of greater enlightenment. But the culture wars of the last 10 years have shown how it's perfectly possible for societies to regress. And let's face it, it's a pointless claim. Every tyrant that has ever lived has assumed he's on the right side of history. And none of us can know what the future holds. But let's consider the culture warriors specifically and whether their claim to be on the right side of history has any merit. What do these people believe and what do they imagine the future will look like? Over the past few years, they have endorsed an ideology that has led to the erosion of women's rights and the medicalization of gay children. They've supported legislation that gives the state a mandate to arrest people for what they say and think. They've called for public monuments and landmarks to be removed, street names to be changed, history to be re rewritten in accordance with their creed. They've continually asserted that truth isn't important, that we should deny biological reality or historical facts if they happen to be inconvenient. They have problematized the arts, the sciences, all branches of higher education, so that students are taught to abandon critical thinking, adopt a conformist worldview, and embrace the new religion of intersectionality and group identity. They have created a climate of fear in which decent people won't express themselves freely out of concern that they might be publicly shamed or lose their jobs. They have told us that Martin Luther King's dream of a colorblind society should be abandoned in favor of a system of heightened racial division. So much for the right side of history. At the same time, those of us who have promoted liberal values, such as free speech and individual autonomy, have been smeared as far right. Those of us who acknowledge that we are the beneficiaries of the achievements of the Enlightenment have been denounced as evil. Those of us who believe in genuine progress have been called reactionary. The culture war has turned everything on its head. Now look at this clip from a video that went viral this week. No. Nope. <coughs> which Hampshire police would realise how ridiculous this is. It is. Of course, I'm happy to come to this. What, 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 did, what, did, what did it need to come to? Tell, what, tell what, us why what, he escalated it to this level. Because I don't understand. I posted something that he posted. You come to arrest me, you don't arrest him. Why has it come to this? Why am I in cuffs? Because of something he shared, then I shared. Because someone has been caused, obviously, anxiety based upon your social media site. So that video shows an army veteran being handcuffed and arrested by Hampshire police. And as you heard there, the reason was that he posted a meme that someone found offensive, specifically that it had caused anxiety. Now, the meme is controversial, but we're going to have to show it so that everyone understands what has happened here. So this is what the meme looks like. And the image here is a composite of four progress pride flags arranged in such a way that they produce the shape of a swastika. And let's have a look at the flag just by itself. Now, this image causes a lot of people anxiety. I've spoken to gay men and lesbians who see this as a symbol of hate and division, a sign that says they're not welcome. Because this flag isn't like the six-stripe rainbow pride flag of old. This one has extra stripes and has come to be associated with a homophobic and misogynistic ideology that has proven to be a, a direct threat to human rights, one that supports the harassment of anyone who dares to challenge the worldview that it represents. So if I feel anxiety about that flag, can I call the police? It appears on the side of police cars. It is flown on police stations. Police officers wear the flag during Pride Month. Can I ask them to arrest themselves? And I'm not being flippant. If the criteria for being led away in handcuffs is merely to cause anxiety, why are the police not being held to account? For many gay people, this flag is a hostile symbol of a movement that wants to rebrand homosexuality as same gender attracted rather than same sex attracted, that wants lesbians to be demonized if they don't want to sleep with men, that wants the state to censor anyone who disagrees. That's why the swastika meme was created. It was a clumsy attempt to say that the progress pride flag in its current form has come to be associated with some of the most authoritarian people in our society. And that's true. And whereas you might find the use of the swastika symbol distasteful, the point being made here is clear. 
And by the way, the kind of activists who like to fly the Progress Pride flag, they call people Nazis all the time. It's their go-to catch-all slur. Anyone who challenges them is no better than Hitler. And not only is this historically illiterate, it trivialises the horror of the Holocaust. So if culture warriors are happy to compare their political opponents to Nazis at every opportunity, why should the police step in when their targets do the same? And the fact that the police would do so, the fact that these activists appear to have the armed forces of the state on their side, would suggest that the comparison with authoritarianism isn't entirely without merit. I do wish that the point could be made without Nazi comparisons, but that's social media for you. We are seeing some pushback against the regressive worldview of these culture warriors. This week, the Tavistock Clinic, a paediatric gender clinic in London run by the NHS, was shut down because a report by Dr. Hilary Cass revealed that it was unsafe for children. Here's what Cass had to say. The evidence base on which it prescribed major hormonal interventions, such as puberty blockers, was close to non-existent. And many clinicians had expressed concerns about poor diagnosis and record keeping and a culture of shutting down criticism. For years, many of us have been warning about the dangers of telling vulnerable and confused children that they were in the wrong body. Most of these kids were simply struggling with their homosexuality. And yet we have been called bigots because we don't think that gay kids ought to be sterilized. Who's really on the right side of history here? Look at these politicians. All of them are saying that they support a ban on what they call trans conversion therapy. But this is linguistic sleight of hand. If they had the ban they wanted and a young person were to go to a specialist to discuss feelings of gender dysphoria, the specialist would have been breaking the law if they tried to discuss these feelings and explore the possibility that other factors might be involved. And these are myriad. There's a strong correlation between autism and feelings of gender dysphoria, for instance. Many young gay people, as I've said, are gender non-conforming. Sometimes children struggle to accept the changes of their body during puberty and they're looking for an escape. There's a strong element of social contagion to these cases. But for a medical practitioner to discuss any of these possibilities would have been criminalised under this so-called trans-conversion therapy ban. And doctors would have been compelled to affirm any feelings of gender dysphoria and fast-track vulnerable kids into medicalization. It is starting to feel as though more and more members of the public are waking up to these problems, however. There's still a long way to go. And while most people are still afraid to speak out, we won't get society back on track. It's important, therefore, that we don't get complacent. Because culture warriors don't like to admit that they've been wrong. A religious zealot isn't going to suddenly concede that his God doesn't exist. How many activists have put their hands up and said, yes, we were wrong about the Tavistock? So far, I've yet to see one of them make that admission. No, they'll keep on promoting this ideology that poses such a risk to gay people and women, and they'll claim to be on the side of the angels. They'll keep calling for state censorship and stronger hate speech laws because, like all authoritarians, they prefer their critics to be silenced, and they don't like it when their belief system is held up to ridicule or scrutiny. So for all these occasional victories, we need to keep on pushing back against the culture warriors. Because if these people really are on the right side of history, the future looks pretty bleak.